Hey guys, this is Blue Finch, uh, bringing a little tutorial video on Benefici's uh, map editor for Super Mario Brothers 3. So uh, without uh, any further ado, let's just uh, get right into it. All right. So um, download uh, the map editor off romhacking.net. I'm sure there is a link in the Discord uh, somewhere but just go wherever and download it. It's not been updated in a long time and we're just gonna click on it to open it. What we do is open your ROM file. I got here normal old Mario 3.NES, so let's open it up. All right, so first things first, there are different Things you can do in this program but after you do anything and I'll explain what I mean by a thing you must save the changes you must save the changes and you do that by clicking implement changes do before world slash mode change before you change to a different world or before you change to a different mode save your work by clicking this. If you don't, anything you do will not be saved. It won't be saved. So please implement your changes. So let's say that you go to tiles and I'm gonna get into all this, so don't worry. You go to tiles, you make a change here, okay? And then you say, all right, well, I need to change my pointers now. You click on pointers. Guess what didn't just save? Those tile changes, okay? So save your work so that your work will be saved. All right, so I'm gonna cover uh, everything in this video, everything. And I'm gonna say pipes for last, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is look at tile changes. It's fun. You can spend a lot of time here just letting your Imagination go wild. This could be your canvas for creation. All right, so if you want to, you can run it in a different resolution. Let me show you here real quick. Be careful with this. I'm not gonna run it in that, but you can do it if you need to, if it's too small. Um, I would have loved there to be a zoom option on this program and it would be near perfect, but anyway. Here we are, this is what we have. Normal old Mario. All right, so you could change the tiles to whatever you want. So let's go ahead and um, make a small change here. As you can see, I'm adding these different pieces of road. And uh, you've gotta be careful in what you add and what you, you put because not everything just works, okay? And unfortunately, that's just something that comes with time and practice. All right, so this should work, what I have here. You got it, uh, one tile between them, bam, bam, bam. All right, so we're gonna save this and we're gonna look at it and see exactly how it plays out, okay? Let me plug in my control here. All right. So we've opened up our normal little Mario 3.NES. And let's see if it works. All right, let's go into the level and see what happens. Uh-oh, what happened? Why isn't this taking me to level one? It's gonna lead us to the next point. Is there any way to escape this? No, it's not. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close that and uh, learn our lesson. Oh my goodness, what did we do wrong? Don't worry, don't worry. That leads us to the next thing, which is pointers. Now these tiles, they don't know anything. They're just tiles. You know, they just, they're images. All right, so we've got a assign to them value and we do that through pointers, okay? So, we want this to be level one, right? 
Currently, it says World 1 Hammer Bros 1. Um, and I'm going to tell you later why there were no Hammer Bros whenever we clicked on that level. But don't worry about that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to left click, okay, to select this one. And then we're going to right click somewhere else, anywhere else, just to get it out of the way. And then we're going to do a left click on this one. As you can see, it says World 1 1. Left click on that. And then we're going to right click on this tile. Okay. Now, what do we do to save our changes? Correct. Implement changes. Now, when we click on this, it should take us to World 1 1. And then we save it. Just to save it. Just to save it. Click back on this hot shot. It worked. All right. Okay. So that is that. So far, you're doing good. You know what to do with tiles. You know what to do with um, pointers. Once again, pointers just uh, actually give real information to what we want that tile to do. Okay. So I'll just uh, go through a couple of these with you. Mushroom house. You want to change uh, what is in the mushroom house. Uh, highlight this pointer, then press enter. Okay. You could literally put anything on a pointer. All right. And these are the different kinds of mushroom houses that exist. So just look through that list and uh, get creative. Uh, World 1 End Castle. This takes you to the, um, the king's room. Okay. This doesn't take you to the actual ship. Now, if, once you enter it, it'll take you to the ship eventually. But um, let me see if there's anything else here before I move on. Um, I covered Hammer Bros. Alright, sprites. Okay. So here's your Hammer Bro sprite. Okay. This is sprite number three in this world. You got sprite number two, which is over the castle. This is where the airship will spawn once a certain flag is set um, after you enter the castle for the first time. It'll spawn there and it'll whoosh, 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 and go to wherever. There's a spot for it to go. And um, you can change that. And this, sprite number one is help. Uh, this has to be sprite number one on any given map. Um, it's just the way that it's coded. It needs to be. All right, so you got that, you got that. And uh, let's say you wanted to add another sprite. How do you do that? You press insert on your keyboard. And then you right click it and you place it wherever you want. To change the actual sprite, you press enter. Boomerang Brother. Item. Tanuki Suit. Okay. Alright, so there's another Hammer Bro. And he will observe roads. Okay. He will observe the roads as you've built them. Alright, so. Um, once again, wherever he ends up landing, let's implement that change. Uh, if he, if you enter this one and he happens to be here, you will go into World 1 Hammer Bros 1 Battle. You want to change that. You can change it here. Or for that matter, you can literally put any of them. Think outside the box. Okay. There. 
to look at how this thing will look once it's live there's no animation here but you click viewer okay you don't have any movement but this is how it looks just a static image okay so once again i'm going to delete this sprite by pressing delete after highlighting it then you're going to press insert on my keyboard okay we're under sprites insert it'll appear up here at the top left already selected we're going to right click where we want it to be what are we going to do next we're going to press enter we're going to select what we want boomerang brother item leaf okay then we're going to save our changes okay pointers that's still what we did it because we saved our change okay so we've added a hammer bro all right starting space we're moving along real good here moving along real good in the uh, map editor there is a file i'm going to open it here real quick there it is smb3start.ips this is a patch file if you want to change where he is uh, going to start on the overworld you can't just do that normally you actually have to patch that file onto your rom and then you can use this feature okay i don't know if this one is patched so i'm not going to try it but once you patch it onto this rom then you can put the starting space wherever you want Okay. All right. Airship retreat points. This is not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is relevant. Um, this shows where the airship can retreat to. Okay. Now I've got like, what, one, two, three locations, right? That's it. But it's actually more than that. I'm going to left click on one and then I'm going to right click it somewhere else. Left click it, right click it, left click, right click, left click, right click, right click, left click, right click. There are five airship retreat points that were overlaid onto this one area. Okay, same here. One, two, three, four, five. Same here. Like the same here. Yeah. There were um, eight there. There were eight there. So altogether, there were 18 airship retreat points here. I'm not going to save this. But um, 18 airship retreat points just on three different spaces. Now, why would they do that? Uh, just so that whenever that, that method runs, that causes it to move from one place to the other, there's a chance it just won't move at all. It'll just end up staying exactly where it already was. So I guess that was like a player service, you know? Because if they had 18 different places all over the map, you know, if you die, you're going to have to always be going somewhere and doing this and that. Maybe you'll end up running into a hammer, bro. Uh, but food for thought, maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you want them to, if they die, they, they're going to have to work for it. Maybe they have to go to a section of the map that they didn't have to go before, right? So it's like uh, kind of punishing them for having not beat the level first try. Now they have to play a super hard level in order to get to the ship to actually end up um, beating the world. And of course, it doesn't have to be completely punitive. You could make it so that that extra level they have to go to uh, works into them going towards a ship like it's, you know, a water level. And at the end of the level, they go into an area that kind of looks like the ship itself or climb a vine up into an area and finish the level. I don't know. Food for thought. Let your uh, let your creativity just uh, be unleashed, right? All right, I'm going to skip pipes because it's the last thing I'm going to do, and then I'm going to go to locks right now. All right, so locks, uh, don't overthink them. Locks are what are handled by a boom boom's death, right? Square one. Locks are broken in stock Mario by the death of a boom boom okay so we're gonna click on this lock we've selected it with the left click now we're gonna press enter okay now this looks a little weird but uh, don't don't be upset about it all right 
So lock B, road vertical. That means that once this lock is busted, what tile replaces it? Just a vertical piece of road, right? We want a vertical piece of road to replace this lock once it's busted, okay? And then it gives us a lock number here. There you go. That's simple. Now, why does it say boom boom here? Well, we've got to know which boom boom activates this lock. So click it. Which boom boom is it? World One Dungeon? Is it World One Dungeon Spike Room? Dungeon or Spike Room? Be careful here because some dungeons have multiple rooms and you've got to remember which one the boom boom's in. Now, World One Dungeon is uh, where it is, okay? This will change the upper nibble, all boom booms or flying boom booms, Y position in the stage to match the world table number, continue. You wanna say yes, okay? Changed, bam, okay? So that's handled. What do we do now? We implement the change, okay? Now, some worlds have multiple locks, multiple boom booms, and so you're gonna need to set more than one lock, okay? So it's that simple. Finally, we're gonna to go to pipes. 